capacity and the availability is now expected. Despite this, food poisoning is still an issue and the doctor is in this morning to discuss food poisoning and some tips that can benefit you. Good morning, Dr. VJ. Good morning. When you get food poisoning, you know. That's right. That's right. It's not a question. How, how do you get food poisoning? You know, food poisoning can be due to any of uh, three major causes. One is contamination of the food that you've eaten with a certain type of toxin. When you get that type of food poisoning, as soon as you eat the contaminated foods, it gets you sick fairly mm -hmm. quickly. Then another type is when the food is uh, already colonized with a certain kind of bacteria that after you consume it, it grows in your body and then makes you sick. So then there's a lag time between the time that you eat the contaminated foods to when you actually get sick. And the third and final type is when you actually eat foods that are, say, contaminated with some sort of a chemical. Okay. You, know, you remember the melamine scare with all the foods right. that were bought that were made in China. Now, if, if something is cooked, mm -hmm. does that mean you can still get food poisoning? or? You know, you can if it's cooked improperly. Mm. But if it's cooked properly, then you generally don't get food poisoning. You know, that's why you have the recommendations of when you cook meat to have a thermometer that you actually put into the center of it so you know that it's cooked through and through and the bacteria in the center of the meat are also killed. Okay. And then you have the milk that's pasteurized. Of course, that's done for you before you get it in the store. But if you're one of the, one of the people who try to get non-pasteurized raw milk, then it's important to bring it home and actually heat it up you know, and follow this, the recommendations fairly strictly. If you don't cook food in it properly, then it, it, it can still be contaminated and get you sick. Here's a good question. How mm -hmm. long can you keep food out and it still be good? I see. All prepared foods, general rule of thumb is you can keep it between 40 degrees and 140 degrees Fahrenheit for six hours. So say you go and you buy some pasta at the store or at the restaurant, you bring it home. That pasta has been sitting on your table for two to three hours already since it's been cooked. So that's three hours out. Mm -hmm. Once you come home, if you wait another three hours before you put it in the refrigerator, you know, it's not really safe. You should throw it away. Okay. Or you can put it in the refrigerator right away, and because your refrigerator is store or stores food below 40 degrees, then it's safe again. How about those of us who like eating our steak raw or nah. close to it? You're taking risks. Really? Yeah, absolutely. You're taking risks. You know, medium rare, rare steaks. In this day and age, in general, you're safe doing that because the various bacteria and other parasites that used to colonize our beef are not present as much in the food supply. But still, it's, it's recommended that you eat your steak and chicken, fish, whatever foods it is that you eat, well cooked. And uh, talking about uh, fish, mm -hmm. uh, it's safe as far as long as you... Uh cook it right that's right and yeah, fish is safe as long as you cook it so long as you stay within the general guidelines we had talked about that several months ago in terms of the type of fish okay. you know there's certain types of fish that tend to have higher mercury levels you want to be careful about that certain type of fish that may or fish or self shellfish that may have other contaminants depending on where they've been collected okay. or the season that they've been collected so you want to be careful about that as well Thank you again for joining us this morning. As always, we do appreciate your time and information. My pleasure. And remember, Dr. VJ is here Sunday to answer all.